All right, so we've got the uh, ground detection working. Now what I'm going to do is, is have uh, player detection uh, as well. Okay, so it's going to be more or less kind of the same thing, but we're just going to set it up to um, test for the player instead. Okay, so um, just like we had here, I'm going to go up to the top and where I have this bool for ground present. I'm just going to go ahead and we'll make it public. Uh, later on, we can switch it to um, private. Private's actually better to do if you can help it. Um, I'm only doing a um, public so that we can see it working. And we'll just say uh, player present. And we're going to set it initially equal to false. Um, okay, so we're going to do player present. That'll be the the uh, the variable that we're going to turn on and off, basically. That's our bool. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, also in the triggers here, we're going to say player present. We're going to get, uh, give it the value of um, player detect, just like we have ground detect. It's going to look kind of like exactly the same. Uh, we don't have that function yet, so we're just going to go down here, and you can see we have this ground detect. And what I'm going to do, because I'm lazy, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy and paste this one. So we're going to go from here to here, control C, and control V, or command C, command V. Okay, but instead of ground detect, there we go. We're going to call it player detect. Okay. So um, we're going to have to change a couple things about this. So we're going to have to do a, uh, uh, we're going to keep it as hit and all that. We're just going to keep using that same variable because why not? Um, it has to run one thing at a time. So it can do, we can just use that for all of them. Uh, we want to transform from the position, but the direction is not going to be vector two up. I don't, or vector two up negative, which means down. We actually want it to be vector two dot left. That's another like predetermined thing. So basically this is going to shoot to the left. Um, and then uh, we will go ahead and we're going to make another variable right here. I have this ground detection distance. Let's go up to the top and where we have ground detection. Um, we'll just go ahead and do public float and we'll call it player detection distance. All right, and that way we can choose how far it looks for people, or it looks for the player. So instead of ground, it will be player, and got to do it here as well, because we got to do it for both of them, and player detection, and same thing here too, because I did a vector two left up here, so I'm just going to do vector two left, and make sure it's not negative. Um, and then we do not want to use a ground mask. I'm not searching for the ground. I'm searching for the player. Now, if you remember earlier with the player, I already created, uh, scroll up. I already created that mask for player and see it's number nine. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and at the top here where we have this layer mask, I'm just going to go ahead and do private layer mask and we'll call it player mask if we can spell and it'll be the same thing one arrow arrow nine so basically it's going to take that uh, it's going to look for the layer nine okay so ch -ch -ch -ch, instead of ground mask it is going to be player mask okay player mask okay so basically it's going to transform from the current position it's going to shoot to the left it's going to um, shoot the amount that we're going to make a variable for later, or we already made the variable, but we're going to punch in a number. And it's going to look for anything with the player mask attached to it, which is just currently called the player. Um, and I just have the array that I'm drawing. And so again, it's from the same position going left. It's going to go the same distance um, color. Let's do, let's see if it's going left. Let's do um, red just so that's a different color, 0.1 and false is fine. Um, and same thing, we'll say if it's if we hit something, go ahead and return true. Uh, if we don't, say false, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back to here. And I'm gonna click on the enemy. Give it a second to kind of boot up here. Enemy, I'm gonna hit F to frame. Okay, and then I'm gonna back this up with the scroll bar here. 
just so I can see that it's working and I'll hit play and then you should see a ray shoot out this way and it'll be blue or red sorry boom and see how we don't see one and the reason why we don't see one is because I did not change the distance here remember we did player detection distance if it's zero it's not gonna be a lot we actually want to be able to detect pretty far so if each one of these is a unit so this is one unit two unit three unit four unit let's say five units let's go ahead and do five units so I'm gonna do five now I'll hit play and there you go so now you can see it shooting out this ray uh, on every frame and it's list it's looking for the player now if you look you see player present now let's see if it works let's go over here and just try la la and there you go see how it shows player is present and go back over here and see how it's not present oops and I died but anyway it's working yay that's great but it's only reading the one direction I need it to read both right because um, that just makes sense. So uh, we're literally going to do the same thing we just did, but we're going to um, we're just going to flip it. So I'm just going to copy the hit section here, this to this. So from hit to after the return, just Control C or Command C, Control V or Command V. Um, and why is this giving me uh, unreachable code? Oh, okay. We'll come back to that in a second. All right. So uh, anyway, so we got this. Um, it's mostly going to be the same, but I need to change a couple of things. I don't want it to go left. I want this one to go right. So if you remember from when we did up, if you put a minus in front of it, it's going to do the opposite. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a negative left. That's going to make it shoot to the right. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Put a minus. And then um, we'll keep the player detection the same. And this time I'm just going to change the color just so that I can tell doesn't actually make a big difference but that way they're different colors just for fun's sake okay now you'll notice that this is green and when I hovered over it, it said oh not reachable the reason why it's not reachable is what that means is that it's gonna run through this right and currently what it does is it runs this bit of code here and then afterwards it says if you hit something send true right Ugh. send true if you don't hit something return false what that means is that it's gonna run this it's going to go this. It's either going to be true or false. It's never going to run any of this because it's going to return these two things. You see what I'm saying? So what we need to do is actually take away this false. So I'm going to take the else false. Just delete that. And now what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, if you go in the one direction, if we shoot left, if you hit something, go ahead and return true. Right? But if it doesn't, it's going to go ahead and do this next thing. And it's going to shoot another ray. And this ray is going to go to the right, and it's going to say, okay, if that one hits something, send true, uh, else send false. But that way, um, by removing the false, it gives this one a chance to more or less happen, okay? So um, let's save that and go back to a unity. Um, hopefully that's still recording. Um, and let's hit play. And let's see. And you can see, yep, we got a blue and a red. And if I go over here, let me click on enemy so we can see it. And if I go over here, yay, you can see it's showing it. Oops, scroll down. It's showing it as player present. Let's go back here. Ah, click back on this. Come on. Um, and if I go on the other side of them, it's still going to show it as present. But you'll notice that when I hit, when I jump and I'm not in its line, it's going to uh, say player not present. We're going to do a little trick to kind of solve that issue. Um, but yeah. Okay, good. So now that's working. We have now the detection more or less working. So uh, if you look, though, our player sort of sucks because he's or she is not really doing anything. It's just sitting there. It's not attacking. It's not moving. It's not doing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and basically let's get the patrol working. I think that makes the most sense. At least then we have the same functionality to which we had the last time. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to go ahead. And right now, if you look, um, our patrol is supposed to run this patrol function, but it currently is not set up. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment it out. And then we're going to go ahead and down here after the triggers, I'm going to go ahead and make that function. So we'll do void patrol. And now when it wants to patrol, it's going to run this function. Okay. Now, 
what we're going to do is this. I'm going to need it to... Um, what I want to have happen is this. I want to basically tell this person, this, this enemy, I want it to be like, okay, move. Move in a direction. I want you to move to the right, we're going to say initially, right? And then what I want to do is say, oh, if you run into something change that force and now apply the other direction and then if you run off then change that force and run the other direction that's basically what we're trying to do okay so we need to apply basically some force to it so um in this most basic sense what we need to do is tell it to move and um what we're going to do is because we're going to be using move quite a bit like when we go to chase people and we go to do other things i'm going to make a function um, that's just going to be our moving function that we'll call for a bunch of other functions in order for them to work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make another function and we're just going to call it void loco locomotion. Okay, and what we're going to do is um, basically we're going to set a velocity on the player. So we're going to say um, the let's see. I already have it in here. See how there's this private rigid body 2D, enemy RB 2D, enemy RB 2D. That is the, um, that's holding the rigid body for us, okay? Um, and if you look on here, uh, we added that rigid body. That's what it's going to do. It's not holding it currently, but that's what this variable does. Then on start, we go ahead and we assign the one that's attached to our, that, that's attached to the same object that our script is. We assign it to it here. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to leverage that. So in locomotion, I'm going to go ahead and say that the enemy RB2D, I'm going to change its velocity, right, to, and it needs, the velocity needs to be a vector two. So we're going to do a new vector two because it's XY. Okay. And we're going to say the, um, the, the velocity I want is going to be enemy speed. Now, if you remember, oops, enemy speed, we have this thing up here. This way, right here. This way I can control how fast it's going, okay? So I'm gonna, the velocity I'm going to add is going to be enemy speed, and that way I can, I can get to it at the um, inspector. And then what I'm going to do, oops, go back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say the Y I don't want to mess with at all. So I'm going to say whatever the transform position dot Y is, just leave that. Like that's just going to be whatever it's at. Okay. That's what that's doing. Um, and that should work. Oh, so um, now what I'm going to do is when we're in patrol, I'm going to run locomotion like this. Okay. So by default, if you remember, um, right here, I have this enemy state and I already set it to patrol. That's what it's going to start out as. Okay. Now, um, then, uh, in my update, it's going to run triggers. Uh, currently it's just detecting the ground and detecting the player. So nothing's happening there. The other thing it's going to run on, on update is going to be the AI brain. And right now I have it set to, that it's going to set, it's going to see what enemy state is right now. It's set to patrol and it says, if it's patrol run patrol, the, the, uh, function and this function runs this currently. So we save that and make sure on enemy, make sure the enemy speed is not zero because it will go nowhere. Let's go, okay, let's go ahead and, oops, let's go ahead and make it, let's say 2.5, that way it's sort of moving. And boom, there it goes, wow, it's, so amazing. That's not the best patrolling I've ever seen. It's more like a suicidal lemming. But we can make this work. So we have it moving, but what I need to do is have it do a little bit more than just that, right? I need it to basically sense if it's on the ground and have it turn around if it's not on the ground, okay? That's basically what I want to do. So when it gets over, we have it sensing the ground already, right? So it's going to be traveling. And then what I want to do is like, oh, you're not on the ground. Turn the F around and go this way. And it goes, oh, you're not on the ground. Turn around. And that's how we're going to do it, okay? Because I already have that set up. So um, we're going to put that in here. So instead of telling it just to move, we're going to tell it to move with purpose, not just suicidal. Okay. So we're going to say if you are on the ground. So if the ground present is true, 
right? So that's true. I want you to basically um, move, right? Uh, oh, sorry. Actually, that's not what we want to do. So uh, we need to tell it to move initially. So we're going to say if the enemy RB2D2, whatever, is uh, velocity, if it's not if, uh, x, if it's equal to zero, oops, not, we don't need two of them, zero and ground is present, right? So um, this is just to make sure that if for some reason it's not moving, it's not going to matter initially um, because um, we already have a set to patrol, but if we switch from something else that's not moving, we want to say if you're not currently moving, like idle is not going to be moving, go ahead and um, we want you to run the locomotion. So that's the idea here. So uh, then we're going to say, so basically if you're not moving, I'm going to take this locomotion here and you're on the ground, you should move. And that makes pretty good sense. Okay, now we're going to do, so that's going to do literally what it's already doing anyway, because it already wasn't moving to start with, right? And it was on the ground. So really it, that changes nothing. This is the part that's actually going to change some stuff. This will make more, this will work better when we have to switch back to it. Okay, so we're going to say else if, we're going to test basically if we're not on the ground. So if the ground's not present, right? Um, what we want to do uh, is basically change uh, our position, right? We're going to say locomotion. Oops, not that locomotion. Locomotion. We want you to run locomotion. The problem is, is that that's literally going to do the same thing that we're doing. So we're going to say, if you hit, if you don't hit the ground, um, I want you to move still, right? Which that just going to make us die again. So what we want to do is tell it to move in the opposite direction. So there's a lot of ways we go about doing this, but in order not to have to make a bunch of different variables and stuff, what we're going to do is we're actually going to test something. So if you look here, we already did it earlier. We said basically if the velocity that we're currently going at is zero, right? So enemy velocity of our X is zero. I told it to move. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of use that. We're going to say, um, enemy rb 2 d do dot velocity dot x. Okay. So that gives us our velocity. So our velocity could be, if we're looking at this, let's say this is the player, our velocity could be positive. It's going this way, right? So, uh, right. So if you look at my x here, you see the number's going up. So the velocity is positive, right? But if he was going this way, it's going negative. So the velocity is going to be positive or negative x, okay? Now, this isn't going to quite work because um, all we're really doing is we're just telling the velocity of what it is. So that's just a, that's like a whole number. What I want to do is just get literally a positive one or a negative one. That's what we're looking for. So I want to say, okay, if it's a negative one, um, like if we're moving in a negative direction, I want you to move in a positive direction. If we're moving in a positive direction, I want you to move in a negative direction. So what I want to do is get a whole number one. Right now the velocity is probably, well, it's probably, uh, what is it? Oh, I don't have it in here. It's probably five, right? That's the velocity that's going at. But I don't want the number five. I just want whether it's positive or negative. So to find that, there's a, a, a built-in function that we can use. Ugh, I hate that. Uh, yeah, there you go. A built-in function that we can use, and it's this. It's um, mathf dot sign like that. And for whatever reason, I there we go. Mathf sign. So mathf sign, and then you have to give it something to test, which is what's inside these parentheses here. Okay. So mathf sign, what it does is it literally gives you the whole value, a positive one or a negative one um, from whatever the number is. So if this is negative 50, it'll give you minus one. If it's positive 345, it will give you positive one. If it's zero, I think it also gives you one. But it'll it'll take whatever it is and it will boil it down to basically a positive or negative number.
Okay. Now you will notice is what we're doing is we're sending now locomotion this this number, this positive or negative number. But if you look, it's not receiving anything. So we actually need to add um, some stuff to that in order to make it work. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put a, um, we need to have a variable that it's going to receive. This variable that we're going to send it, the positive one or the negative one, needs to um, go in here. Okay. So we're going to say is float enemy speed multi right so it's just going to be a multiplier onto the speed and all we're going to do is we're going to take the enemy speed and we're just going to multiply it times the enemy speed multi okay and let's put that in parentheses to make sure that's all hunky dory there we go so basically it's going to take whatever the current speed is and multiply it times um, that number now that Seems like it's going to work. Now, what you'll notice also is see how this one's now giving an error? Because whenever you call this function, it's always going to ask for a float. It's always going to need a number. So if, I want, if I'm want, if i going in a, a positive direction, I want it to start going forward to the right, I'm just going to give it to 1. That way, what's going to happen is it's going to take that 1, it's going to put 1 where this is, right? So it's going to put 1 here. That 1 is going to show up here. So let's take enemy speed times one, which means literally what enemy speed already is, and then it's going to move it that direction. Now, that this seems like it would work. It actually won't because here's the problem. I'm saying if the ground, um, if we're not on the ground, locomotion, um, and we say, oh, take whatever velocity we're currently going in. This is just going to give us the direction we're already going in, right? Like if I'm going to the right, and let's say the number is... 12 right and my velocity is 12 it's going to give me a 1 it's going to put that here it's going to put it here I'm still going to go to the right what I want to do is the opposite of what I'm currently at so we're going to do minus f sine yada 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 what that's going to actually do is it's going to take whatever we currently are whether it be positive or negative let's say this is a negative number and it's going to make it a positive number. If this ends up being a positive number, it'll make it a negative number by this, this negative uh, symbol, right? It's going to do the opposite of what it is. And we'll save that. And we'll go in here. And we're going to play, hopefully. Game A. All right. And then we're going to look up on this one. That's why we have the two views. And it's moving very slowly. It's really, really inching. Come on. There he goes. Oh, he's getting a little bit stuck. Okay. Um, one of the problems is you might have noticed it looked like it was like a slug uh, going across. The reason why is that it has friction and stuff. Um, what we need to do is actually, let's add a, uh, we need to add a physics material. So if you look at here, you see how it says material? It says none. Um, we're going to make one. So go ahead and create a folder. So I'm in my assets folder. Create folder. And we'll call it um, physics material. Open up that folder, and then we're gonna right-click again, create, and we want to create not a material, but a physics material 2D. So there's physics material, but we want 2D, and we'll call this um, enemy physics material. Okay. And I just want to take this friction and make that a big old Zippo. Okay. Click on the enemy. And then you'll see right here we can apply it. I'm just going to take this, click and drag it over top of this. You can also click on this, and it's the only one that's available. Oops, let's back this thing up. Um, and that will... So now we'll have a little less friction. So then we'll watch this. And he should slide a little bit easier. There you go. And now we slide him back and forth. Yay! Because basically what's happening is that uh, it's going through. It's like this. And then as soon as it detects that it's not on the ground, oops, I don't know what happened there. Um, as soon as it detects that it's not on the ground, where are we? Patrol. Okay, so it's uh, and this is just for initially if it's not moving and it's on the ground, go ahead and start moving in the right direction. But after that, 
if it eventually senses that it's not on the ground, what it's going to do, it's going to again call locomotion. It's going to say, okay, I want to apply another velocity or a new velocity to it. And I want you to apply a velocity that is the opposite positive or negative direction that I'm going, right? So if I'm moving to the right and it's whatever number, let's say six, it's going to take that number and it's going to, okay, take it as a one value. So it'd be one. And then it's going to say, be a minus of that. So it's going to be one, so it's going to become a negative one. And it's going to take whatever the speed is and it's going to multiply it times minus one. And then it will go in the opposite direction, right? But if it was like, say we're moving to the, to the left and it's a minus five, it'll make that a minus one and then it will do the opposite because we put the minus here so it'll make it a positive one and it'll take enemy speed times positive one and move it to the right instead and that's basically how it works so it's list it's looking for um the uh positive and uh negative of what we're doing okay and then what that does when we hit play again is it will go back and forth. Now there is another thing I would like to do with this. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. So you can see he's going back and forth. Um, it's not as obvious here, um, but he's getting his butt way out here. What I would like to do is have the um, the uh, the test. I'm going to put this down too, so he's not wiggling weird. I would like to put it so that it's actually right now it's shooting from the center of our enemy down here. But the problem is that that means he's going to get right to the end of the edge here, and then he's going to turn around, and that's just kind of be kind of weird looking. It is not as obvious right now, but it would be really obvious on um, you know some other um, things. So what I would like to do is actually take it and put it at the front of our enemy. Um, uh, but you know what? What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is that it's working right now, so I'm actually gonna leave that a lot. Well, do I need that later? Hang on a second. Yeah, you know, I I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. So I would like to make it so it, it happens in the front as opposed to not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make a variable uh, that's gonna hold that value because obviously it's gonna be different depending on the size of your like your player might be you know, a, a quadruped, so it's long, right? Or it might be really tall, so it's short. Um, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, put that up here. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna put underneath the um, ground detection. So I'm gonna do public, and we're just gonna say, um, uh, we'll make it a float, and it's gonna be ground, uh, ground ray detect, offset X. I'm just gonna worry about the offset X. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this control C or command C and then um, when we call it right here okay ink all right cool oh there it went come on just go where I'm clicking please there you go control V we're gonna send it that value so we're gonna say call ground and I want to give you the value of um, that ground detect offset. But you notice that it's, it's not good because basically we don't have a thing that's receiving it here. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a float. We're gonna do a float and we'll call it offset X uh, mount, all right. And what we're going to do is this. So on the um, raycast transform dot position, this is using the position of the player, which means directly center. This is going to have to change. So this is what we're going to change. So I want to be able to have access to the X and Y. So we're going to do a new vector two because I don't want to change the Y. I'm just worried about the X like that. So a new vector two and we're going to say the transform dot position dot x so for its x position i'm going to take the position that our enemy currently is and then we're going to add to it that offset x amount okay um and then the uh for the other one do a comma The other one is just going to be whatever it currently is, which is transform.position.y. Um, 
So we're going to do a new vector 2, uh, but notice that this doesn't work. So we've got to put a parentheses here and put another one here. So there should be a parentheses here and here for this vector 2. And then I need one here and here for this section inside of here. Okay, so these have one and then that has one like that. Okay. And then I got to copy um, that for everything else. Uh, but there is going to be a problem with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, you don't need to do it because we're going to have to undo it anyway. Oops, I got to grab this whole chunk. Control C. So instead of transform position, we're going to do Control V. All right, so I'm just going to take this and put that there. Um, and I didn't also, hang on a second. I gotta grab this whole bit here. I didn't grab the whole thing. Like that. Control C and then right here. Control V. Alright. Good. Now we have a little thing. Okay. Save that. And there's gonna be a problem and you'll see it pretty quickly. Um, but it'll be more obvious when we're patrolling. Once you see it moving, you'll know what I'm talking about. Boop. Okay. This is why we use the debug dot uh, draw a line, because that way I can see um, the thing. Uh, Let's see so I don't think you can see it so well ah, all right hang on a second let's see um, basically what the issue is oh actually here's one of the problems you can't see it because I didn't put the offset so here's the offset X let's go ahead and we'll just do two which is more than it that's actually a lot isn't it uh, let's just do one that way you can see it okay so it should be out here, but you'll see the ray is going to be out here, right? As opposed to right by him, because it's going to be offset it by one now. See the ray? Okay, boom. Now what do you notice? He's going to fall off because the ray shooting out here, but it's always to the right. So what we need to do is we need to multiply this um, by the direction, right? So I want it to be either positive to the right or negative to the left. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before that math at that math f um, sign cheat. In fact, actually, I'm just gonna copy it. I don't need the minus part, but I'm just gonna grab this whole part here. We'll Control C. So I want this math f dot sign, and I'm gonna take the velocity that we're currently going at. And all we're gonna do is after this amount part. I hate that it. Can I just put it in there without you? There you go. We're going to do multiply it times um, this value. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Times control V. And the, so what this again is going to do, it's going to take what the velocity is. So whether we're moving, moving in a positive direction, like we're moving at six or whatever for our velocity, it'll say, oh, that'll be a one. So it'll take whatever this is and multiply it times one, which will just con it'll shoot it in a positive direction. But if let's say we're moving negative, right? Let's say we're moving to the left, right? And let's say it's four. It's probably I mean it'd be the same on both sides, obviously. So we'll so let's say it's negative six, right? Um, it'll boil that down to a minus one. So whatever this ends up being, it'll become a negative direction, and it will it'll cast it to the left as opposed to the right. Um, so I'm just going to save that and go back here. And you should see it changing here. There we go. And boop. There you go. And what's nice about this is that you'll notice that now he doesn't or she doesn't get right to the edge. Right? Now it doesn't have to get right to the very edge. It's going to read ahead of itself a little bit um, to make sure uh, that it's on the edges. But now we have a patrolling, and that's pretty cool. Um, there's going to be a lot more to do to this, but we basically have the same, we did a lot of code to get the same function we had. But I could take this and I can drop it anywhere. It's a lot more dynamic. So for instance, let's say I take it and I put it in here, you're going to say, boom, look it, it'll work on anything. Uh, as long so it, it will basically keep itself from falling off which is pretty cool um, through a basic little bit of code all right uh, and we will continue on with the next one